everyone, my name is Natalie. Today I'm finally going to do a video this week, so it's been... I sort of feel like I've lost track of time and just now it is Saturday and I realized that I haven't made a video this week so I thought that I would finally get to the tag that I've been tagged to do by Jessica from Jessica's Reading Ruminations. I love her, I've been following her on Instagram for a long time and she just started a booktube channel of her own so I will link her tag video below. This is the stay at home book tag and it's questions all about the staying at home of the lockdown situation. The first question is laying in bed, a book you could slash have read in a day. So I'm not a fast reader at all so I immediately thought of comics or children's books and the one that I chose for this is The Wizard of Oz by L. Uh, L. Frank Baum. This is one of my childhood favorites and I've read this one probably about 10 times at least. The last time I read it, I definitely read it in less than 24 hours, uh, so that's the reason I chose it for this question. Um, but this is a children's, cl children's classic published in the beginning of the 20th century, following Dorothy, of course, who is swept up by a tornado and moved into a magical world where she meets uh, very memorable characters. I mean, all of you probably know The Wizard of Oz. There are some problems that I have with the more um, the follow-up books in the series. I think there is some things that are not um, that hasn't aged well. Uh, but the first book, uh, I don't think I've come across anything that really pisses me off. I just got this. Um, what what are these called? the uh, Macmillan Collector's Library Editions. I just got this this spring uh, to have on my shelves because I realized I didn't own a Wizard of Oz book. I've been uh, borrowing it from the library and listening to uh, or reading the ebook. So I finally have a physical copy and I will probably reread this one at some point soon. The second question is snacking, a guilty pleasure book. So I don't really get the whole guilty pleasure term. I feel like I don't really have any guilty pleasures. I have a lot of pleasures when it, when it comes to books and things that sort of comfort reads or comfort zones within reading and that is how I interpreted this. So for that I chose The Light Keepers by Abby Jenai, which is a book that I read, actually the only one that I finished during the Springathon and I loved reading this book. I gave it four stars because of some plot points uh, but the reading experience is probably the most enjoyable I've had all year. Uh, this is about a woman who's, who works as a photographer, nature photographer, and she moves in onto an island, uh, Farallon Islands, and um, she starts working with a team there. So there's sort of less than 10 people living on the island and they're completely isolated because of the situation of the island. So it's a really rough climate. Um, it's sort of the nature itself is sort of a character in itself. And I loved the setting of this. I loved the atmosphere, the mystery, the tension between the characters. Um, I think this is basically everything that I like in a book. Uh, so this was one of my most enjoyable reading experiences this year for sure and for a long time since. And I haven't stopped thinking about this setting, the Farallon Islands, and I've even watched some uh, like cam from the island that you can find online uh, because I can't stop thinking about the Farallon Island as a location and it's just as beautiful in real life as it is in this novel. Uh, so this is not my guilty pleasure but definitely uh, one of my most pleasurable reading experiences uh, since a long time. The third question is Netflix, a series you want to start. So this is a series that I have started before, but I want to start it from the beginning and read through the entire thing this time. And that, that is Sherlock Holmes. I've read uh, the, the Sign of the Four and um, A Study in Scarlet and How Hound of Baskerville. So the only one in this particular volume it, that I haven't read is The Valley of Fear. And I think I've read one or two of the short story collections as well. So I've read most of the series already, um, but I'm looking forward to starting from the beginning and just following Sherlock and Watson from the beginning to the end. I'm sort of thinking of doing like a Sherlock Holmes uh, project, 
uh, similar to what Kate Howe is doing with her Cinderella Chronicles, where she watches or reads various adaptations of Cinderella in various forms and reviews them on her channel. I kind of want to do something similar with Sherlock Holmes because I love all of the adaptations and things that I've seen so far. Uh, I thought it would be a fun thing. I'm not sure if I'll be sharing it on um, my channel, but it's definitely something I'm thinking of doing for myself. So I thought before getting started into all of the adaptations, I will get my groundings with having finished all of the books in the original series. The fourth question is Deep Clean, a book that's been on your TBR for ages. This is one that I know for sure is among the oldest on my TBR, and that is The Well of Loneliness by Radcliffe Hall. And this is a um, LGBTQ classic. So it is actually on my summer reading plans TBR thing, uh, I think, at least uh, that is my intent. That was my intention. I'm not sure if I actually mentioned it in the video, uh, but I have put it on a pile of books uh, that I'm picking for uh, LGBTQ reading uh, for Pride Month, but also for the summer in general. And uh, this is about a woman who falls in love with another woman, I think, or starts dressing as a man. I'm not sure exactly about the um, the gender specifics. I just know that it is an LGBTQ classic. It's one that I've had for a long time, and I have actually started reading this one. I think I got... yeah. I got this far in, so almost a fourth, I think, or a fifth uh, of the way through and did enjoy it. I just sort of was sidetracked by other things. Uh, so that is also one of the reasons it's been long on my TBR because a lot of the ones that has lingered are books that I've started and cannot be bothered to return to the beginning when I've already started them. The fifth question is Animal Crossing, a book you recently purchased because of the hype. I'm not sure if I bought this because of the hype, but definitely uh, because of good reviews. And that is Wayward Lives, Beautiful Experiments, Intimate Histories of Riotous Black Girls, Troublesome Women, and Queer Radicals by Sadia Hartman. I found this book through uh, various reviews on Instagram. Um, in the beginning of June, which is why I decided to buy it. Uh, so this is all about, um, as it's, the title says, beautifully written and deeply researched, Wayward Lives, Beautiful Experiments examines the revolution of black intimate life that unfolded in Philadelphia and New York at the beginning of the 20th century. In wrestling with the question of what a free life is, many young black women created forms of intimacy and kinship indifferent to the dictates of respectability and outside the bounds of law. More on the... Um, not the science, but the sort of the research perspective on um, black women's lives and queer history. So I feel like this will pro probably be uh, something that I haven't read a lot of. Uh, so I can't wait to get to this one. Uh, this is very high on my list since I just got it. Um, but I have felt like I haven't been that much in the mood for nonfiction. I'm not sure what it is. I think I might just have a sort of a burnout from reading the Book Two Prize books that I've just been craving more uh, fiction things. The sixth question is productivity, a book you learned from or that had an impact on you. So this sort of fits with both, but in particular with the impact thing. And that is A Raisin in the Sun by Lorraine Hansberry. This was definitely one of the books that I had on my summer reading plans and it was fantastic. I'm very inexperienced with reading plays and probably part of it is just that I associate plays with Shakespeare and I haven't really had um, a, uh, an amazing experience with Shakespeare so far, so I think that has kind of put me off. Uh, but reading Raisin of the Sun was one of the best reading experiences of the year for me. It was a five-star read, and it is the second five-star read for me in this in 2020. The female characters in the play especially were just so uh, sharp, they were s smart and wise, and had a, such good lines, could visualize it so well, and immediately believed in these characters. And uh, the, the, even though uh, pretty much everything is happening in just one small apartment, it was so, and it's so contained, it was so, I don't know, rich and um, very vivid. The family is planning on moving out into a white neighborhood and uh, one of their neighbors comes to talk to them and 
pretty much scares them off this idea because uh, other um, black families who have moved to white neighborhoods have been bombed recently and uh, one of the people from a sort of a neighbor neighborhood association thing comes to warn them off that the white neighborhood doesn't want them to move there. So there's both the external conflict with um, other people in this family but also the conflicts going on within the family and the way that they deal with things individually as well. The seventh question is FaceTime, a book you've been gifted and this is one of them. It is The Shaking Woman uh, or A History of My Nerves by Siri Husted. This was one about my uh, best friend found for me in a library sale. I love Siri Husted and she knew that so she p picked this up uh, just spontaneously for me. So Siri Husted has some has had some health issues and um, she is also really interested in neuroscience. I think this book is sort of exploring both the science and her personal experience with her nerves, <laughs> I'm assuming. Um, and I haven't read a lot of Sir Husband's nonfiction yet. Uh, I've just read sort of samples of her essays in the big essay collection that she has uh, published a few years ago. Uh, but yeah, I'm really excited to read this one. And the, this physical book as well is uh, connected with uh, a good memory. So I'm looking forward to finally getting to that one in the near future. I mean, I have a lot of books I want to get to, to in the near future, the eighth question is self-care, something you've done recently to, to look after yourself. So, um, I mean, reading is one of the things that I'm constantly doing to try to calm down and to sort of uh, reground myself and all of those things. But one thing that has been a constant companion and enjoyment all through this whole corona situation and the last few months has been the violin. So I started taking violin lessons in the beginning of the year and I haven't been able to go to the actual lessons, I've just been practicing on my own since the uh, pandemic. But it has been so fun. Uh, I still suck at playing the violin but I try to do it every day or most every day. It has just been so fun to learn something just for the sake of learning it. I think as you get older there's not a lot of things that you can do that you don't really have like a, an agenda or something with. Like it always feels like you're doing something that has to have some kind of productivity or some kind of result with it, whereas playing the violin and practicing it for me has just been a pleasure in and of itself. Just the learning of it, the finally making a nice sound of it, it's um, it's a fun experience in itself and it doesn't really have any productivity uh, associated with it, which I'm finding quite um, calming and uh, relaxing uh, in comparison to even with reading I feel like I still have this sort of I want to write reviews and I want to be able to talk about books on this channel there's still some kind of productivity uh, interwoven into that uh, activity whereas the violin has no um, no effect or result other than I'm enjoying the process. And so that is the thing that I've been doing for self-care or whatever. The bonus question is name a book coming out soon. So I mean to be honest I have a lot of books um, that I have my eyes on that are coming out in the near future. Um, two books that has just come out that I wanted to mention is Vanishing Health by Britt Bennett, uh, which is the author of The Mothers, and this book came out I think in the beginning of June. I have pre-ordered this book, so I'm eagerly waiting for my copy to arrive. I loved The Mothers. I read it on um, Belinda's recommendation, Belinda from Belinda's Book Nook. We'll link her channel below. Uh, I loved The Mothers, so I'm looking forward to reading uh, Vanishing Health. I think it's about to twin sisters and the way that they um, go about with their lives in different ways. Um, that's pretty much all I know in specifics. Another one that I'm excited for that has also just come out is Pizza Girl by Jean Kyung Fraser, uh, which is about I think an 18 or 19 year old uh, girl who is pregnant and she's also a pizza, pizza delivery girl and uh, she starts to fall in love with a woman in the neighborhood where she delivers, I think. That is the gist that I got from this and uh, I'm just really excited for it to arrive. It sounds like a fun summary book with queer uh, themes to it and uh, it also has one of the best covers that I've seen 
for this year, I think, at least. So those are all of the questions for the Stay at Home book tag. Uh, I want to tag a literature geek blog uh, who has just started her channel and she's really thoughtful in her reviews. I'm not sure if she, do she does tags, uh, but uh, if she feels like it, feel free to do this one. Uh, the next one is What's Bookin', which is another uh, channel that I just found out through um, found out about through the Springathon and whose videos I've really enjoyed recently. Uh, and the last one I want to tag is Books with B, uh, another channel that I've been watching for at least a few weeks or months and whose content I really have been enjoying especially her vlogs and things, uh, I find quite re relaxing and calming. Uh, so that is all I have for this tag video. I hope you are doing okay and that you're staying safe and that you're having a good summer so far and I'll talk to you soon. Bye!